a specific interpretation task. Um, so I have here an interpretation report uh, for a seismic volume. This interpretation report I've sourced from Geoscience Australia, which has been provided under a CC BY 4.0 license. And what it shows is a series of interpreted horizons on the left hand side for inline 1450 and for cross line 1464. Cross line is laid out in a negative saw order so the line numbers are descending from left to right. The horizons that have been picked are the blue water bottom, the orange which is the top of the gull formation, the green which is the base of the Mudurong formation, and the red which is the top of the barrow group. So as an exercise I'm going to interpret the region from the top of the gull formation to the base of the Mudurong formation and I'm going to create an automated tool that's going to propagate that out throughout the entire volume and then extract horizons from that. So here we are back in our map view. I'm going to select the seismic data associated with that interpretation report and begin the interpretive task. And I've already selected the relevant inline and crossline. So this is inline 1450 and I'm going to go ahead and try to interpret uh, the base, the top of the girl to the base of the Mudurong uh, like we discussed. So one way to do this efficiently is to select our horizon tool. You see that with the horizon tool selected, small line segments are created. If I click it on a line segment, it will try to track using a very simple algorithm all the way across uh, or at least as far as it can. So by, I've clicked, I've selected the top of the formation that I want to label and then if I click again it will highlight everything in between. So I can repeat that pattern to try to annotate this horizon. And this is somewhat similar to standard horizon tracking tools that you might be familiar with. Now you can see that there was a f just a few clicks and I'm able to highlight a lot of this region, but you know there's some obvious errors. Here it was missing, so it was, wasn't able to interpret across some discontinuity here. So I'm going to just use the polygon tool to interpret that. I'm zooming in by holding down the control key and, key and using the mouse wheel or finger gestures, and I'm clicking to select a polygon. I've clicked three control points and now I'm closing the, the polygon by going back to its origin and now that's labeled. If I moving over, if I select the brush tool, I might just go ahead and fill this in because there's not too much to do here. So that's a lot of clicking. You don't want to have to constantly be going back to the tool menu. So we have some shortcuts. B is for brush, H is for horizon, L is for line, and P is for polygon. Now we can see we've corrected all the areas where we were missing, but we've actually introduced some of what looks like to me some false positives. I don't think that this is sitting on the ref right reflector as we've gone across the faults. So I can actually click on the horizon tool and now if I hold down the shift key and click again, instead of annotating it, it will delete. And so the horizon tool can be used to delete uh, errors or to delete annotations. And the same with all the other tools. So the polygon tool, for instance, can be as well. Somewhat nonsensical for the line tool, so it won't behave that way. But So now, I think that we're on the wrong reflector there. Let's go in. And we're going to clean this up. And we'll just clean it up a little bit with the brush. With the brush. Right. <coughs> Maybe missing a little on the fault. Zoom out. And we've annotated uh, that part of the horizon. Now let's go into the cross line. 
we're hitting T for toggle. It looks like things are somewhat more continuous in the cross line. So are we feeling lucky? Yes. And I feel like we're missing a little bit here. Maybe skipping a little bit where we shouldn't. I'm not sure. Um, we're going to have to go back and forth between the view. So now we've labeled an inline and a cross line. Again, I'm hitting T for toggle. Now let's go ahead and see if they tie. So, you know, interpretation, we're actually labeling a 3D object, which is a formation by a series of 2D cross sections. And so we want to make sure that this ties. So I've navigated here into the view tab, which is going to give us a 3D view of the seismic. And by using the, the wheel gestures, we can, we can move, we can pan. If we hold down control again, we can zoom. If we click on one of the sliders, we can move the slider. But here, I just want to test my, because I'm tying, and you can see that in this case, I'm not. So if I zoom in, you can identify a discontinuity in here. So I would have to go back and, and correct that and make sure that my interpretation is right. And I'll do that now.